In nature, there are few things that are as awe-inspiring as a bird soaring high in the sky. Upwards, as they catch the thermal updrafts. Such sights has inspired man to invent flying and floating machines of various sorts throughout the ages. Yes, the soar of a bird is a magnificent sight. And there was an artist, a sculptor, who was so captivated by this sight that he decided to capture the essence of this motion visually by presenting it in three-dimensional form. The work I refer to is titled Bird in Space. The artist, Constantin Brancusi, and with his many variations on this subject and the manner in which the artist created the forms, he completely redefined the imagery and idea of sculpture so radically that it can truly be said that he was ahead of his time. Caitlin Schultz, in her article written for the website Artsy in 2018, stated, quote, his artwork didn't follow the style of his Western predecessors. It broke with the academic tradition and helped shape the principles of radically reductive and non-representational modernism that are both celebrated and scorned today, unquote. So who was this sculptor who in some circles came to be identified as the father of modernist sculpture with all due respect to Auguste Rodin? Where did his ideas come from? And what were his influences? In this brief presentation, I will, through the imagery of his work, attempt to show Constantin Brancusi's vision from the origin and point of departure to the evolution of the imagery from abstract figure into what I call conceptual abstraction. His attempt to visually convey through the medium of sculpture, his interpretation of the essence of flight, the essence of soaring. Constantin Brancusi was born in Romania in February of 1876, born of peasant ancestry. At an early age, he learned to carve wood, creating images and designs that reflected the folk images native to the region where he grew up. Later in his career, those images and designs will become important elements in his work. In the late 1890s until 1902, he attended art schools in Craova and Bucharest, Romania. He then moved to Paris in 1904 and enrolled in the École du Beau Arts School of Fine Arts. Three years later, he was a studio assistant to acclaimed sculptor Auguste Rodin. Not long after, he parted ways with the great sculptor, and years later, when asked why, he famously replied, quote, nothing can grow in the shadow of a great tree, unquote. Brancusi's vision was elsewhere artistically, and he felt stifled, restricted by the style of Rodin, even though the great sculptor himself was considered avant-garde in his own right. Brancusi wanted to stretch further. Instead of sculpting predominantly in bronze, as was the practice of the day, Brancusi turned his attention to other materials and began producing work in brass, marble, plaster, stone, and bronze. He also began the pattern that was to be his practice throughout his career, and that is to create a series of sculptures based on the same themes, but created out of various materials. Sidney Geist wrote in his journal article titled Brancusi's Bird in Space, a psychological reading that quote, the birds of Brancusi constitute a progressive series that is by far the longest pursued by the sculptor. 27 works in marble and bronze made in the period between 1910 to 1950, unquote. Now there is some debate as to the actual number in the series. Athena Taka, who wrote a book that chronicles the genesis and evolution of the birds, titled Brancusi's Birds, says that there are 36. 
27, 36, the number is uncertain. But what is certain is that the theme evolved in varying degrees of abstraction to culminate into the form bird in space. It begins in 1910 with the sculpture Maestra. The title of the piece is from a Romanian folktale about a mythical bird possessing special powers. The work is described in the Museum of Modern Arts 29 exhibition publication, MoMA highlights. Quote, Maestra is a towering sculpture of more than seven feet tall with four distinct parts. The lower section is made of limestone and comprised of two rectilinear blocks separated by a roughly hewn carving that was originally a standalone sculpture in its own right titled Caryatid. Maestra is Brancusi's first work to feature a bird, a subject to which he would return throughout his career." Unquote. The work is crowned with the abstracted form of the bird that is carved and polished out of white marble and placed atop the limestone pedestals, totem-esque in appearance. Now it is noteworthy to note that another aspect of the artist's composition begins here as well. The concept of the base being incorporated into the overall composition of the sculpture, becoming a component of, to be viewed as one singular piece of sculpture. He would later create a series of Maestro sculptures from various materials and combine them to complement the primary subject of the work. Next in the evolution of the series was the sculpture titled La Oiso, or The Bird. In the article titled Brancusi's Golden Bird, a new species of modern sculpture, Margarita Andriotti of the Art Institute of Chicago wrote, quote, if we compare Golden Bird to the type that preceded and followed it, we can see that it played a pivotal role in Brancusi's move away from a descriptive analytical approach to his subject towards a more synthetic mode of expression. Maestro presents a still identifiable tail, leg, body, neck, head, and eyes. In Golden Bird, the sculptor abandoned any suggestion of a clear differentiation of parts in favor of a continuous surface that evokes a bird through its subtle inflections rather than representing it. Golden Bird is also the work in which Brancusi first began to focus on what he called the essence of flight, an aspect that is clearly dominated later inversions of his sub of the subject as the bird form becomes increasingly attenuated in the many versions of bird in space unquote one can see that brancusi continues to evolve the form of the bird heightening the abstraction but not completely losing the form to abstraction as it is still recognized as a bird image he continued to make other versions of the original again, combining different materials. He culminates the series with the work titled Bird in Space. And it is with this work that the artist achieves the pinnacle of his vision, capturing the very essence of the soar. The slight curvature of the form suggests upward movement. In a 1970 article written by Burton Wasserman titled Elegance in Three Dimensions, he quotes the then director of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Dr. Evan H. Turner, who had the following to say in describing Brancusi's work. Quote, Brancusi's role in the development of modern sculpture cannot be stressed enough. He was the first to explore the values of pure form, unquote. 
Other great artists have visually described motion in other mediums. Leonardo da Vinci, Sketches of the Wind, Marcel Duchamp's New Descending, A Staircase Number no. 2, and Umberto Baccioni's Unique Forms of Continuity in Space. All explored the concept of motion and had their vision, their own interpretation. And yet I feel that is where Brancusi stands alone. In terms of capturing the idea of motion, none of them approached Brancusi's end result. Sidney Geist, in his article, quotes Brancusi as the artist shares his thoughts on flight. Quote, all my life, I have sought only the essence of flight. Flight, what bliss. One can see through the progression of the series, the initial concept from the principal image evolve into the vision the artist sought. It captured the essence of the soar, the essence of flight as a bird in space. Constantin Brancusi had no peer. His results conceptually and visually created works over a century ago that could easily fit in today's contemporary art scene. An artist and sculptor that was truly ahead of his time. 